Hey guys, this will be our solutions video for the worksheet on basic perimeter area and volume. Uh, one thing you're going to hear me say a lot on this worksheet is if they did not give you a figure or a drawing of the shape, you're going to need to draw it yourself. And you're going to need to label any information they give you in the question that they did not label or draw out on the figures or diagrams they did give you. So looking at question 27 here, uh, it tells us a parallelogram has a perimeter of 96 inches. And you've got one side measures 16. If it can be determined, we want the lengths of the other three sides. So again, first thing, we're going to draw a parallelogram. That is a slanted rectangle. Uh, looks like the state of Tennessee. And it said one side is going to be 16. So we got this side here is 16. And again, it's a slanted rectangle. That means you're going to have two sets of congruent sides. So two sets of sides that are the same. If I labeled this left side as 16, that means on the opposite side of that, the right side will be 16 also. And it told us the perimeter was 96. Well, perimeter is when you add all of your sides together. So we know that all four sides are going to combine to 96. We can take our calculator. So 96 was the sum. We've already used 16 twice. So I'm going to subtract 16 twice. I'm left with 64. So that 64 is going to be split evenly into the other two sides. So we'll divide that by 2. That makes 32 for the remaining sides. So I can label each of those 32. Um, that means the other three sides would be C here, 16, 32, and 32. Looking at 25, uh, it says we have the area of a rectangle. That's what we're looking for. We also know which expression represents the area, again, of the shaded region. A lot of times students just overthink this question. Keep in mind, area of a rectangle is length times width. So we're looking for the length of the shaded region and the width of the shaded region. So if you start to count, we can see we've got one, two, three, four, five out of six for the shaded length. And one, two, three out of four for the shaded width. So that'd be five, six times three fourths. That's going to make E there. 36. Uh, we got Erica's landscaping the front yard. The yard, which is level, has the shape of a rectangle. And we've got 60 feet wide, 80 feet long. It says to cover the depth with a layer of topsoil with a uniform depth of four inches or one third of a foot. I'm trying to find um, how many cubic feet of topsoil. So this does not tell us perimeter area or volume. So we have to think about this situation and what it would be, again, in terms of perimeter area or volume. So we're filling up something with topsoil. Typically, when you fill up things, it's going to be volume. Another giveaway is where it says cubic feet. So cubic means three-dimensional. So if something is three-dimensional, again, you're going to be finding volume. Finding volume of something that's rectangular, that's going to be length times width times height. So we're told it was 80 feet long. So that's going to be volume equals 80. We were told that it's 60 feet wide, so times 60. And then you multiply with our height. So height um, is the same thing as depth. And we've got four inches or one third of a foot. So with that, um, a lot of times students aren't sure which one to use. Since our answer needs to be cubic feet and the first two measurements were in feet, we're going to use this one third of a foot. So that's going to be times one third. So if we go back and do 80 times 60 times one-third, that's going to get you your 1,600, and that's going to make answer choice F. All right, looking here at 17, so we're told the area of a square is 36. And we want the perimeter of the square. So this is one of those where you're going to have to use your information um, from one scenario to solve the other. 
So we've got a square. You know, on a square, all sides are even. And we're told the area equals 36 square inches. Well, with a square, area is equal to the side squared. So that means 36 equals our side squared. And we're going to need that side to find the perimeter. I should have mentioned that first. Uh, you, need a, you need a side to find the perimeter, which is why they gave you the area. So if 36 equals the side squared, you'd square root here, square root that. That's going to make a side equal to 6. So if you know one side is 6, that means all sides of the square are going to be 6. And if you add up all four sixes, that makes E24 for the perimeter there. All right, number eight, uh, we got a floor plan here for a building, and it wants to know what is the area of this building. So this is an irregular shape. So with an irregular shape, you want to split that up into shapes you can find the area of. You could either split this um, horizontally or vertically, depending on your preference. I'm just going to draw a line here, split this horizontally. Now I've got a rectangle on top. And I've got a rectangle here on the bottom. So we're going to find the area of each of those rectangles. So this is still 22 wide and still 50 long. So if we multiply 50 by 22, that's going to make 1,100. And where students will go wrong is this is still 22. However, this is not 40 for this length. We have already found this portion here when we found the bottom rectangle. So we need to figure out what this top portion is. Again, students will go wrong because they'll think we should just divide this by two and split it in half because we're taking part of it away. Well, what happens is if this right portion is 22, it means the left portion is 22. So the side was 40. 40 minus 22 makes the top 18. And then from there, we can multiply the length and width. So 22 by 18 makes 396 for the top. And if this was 1,100 and this was 396, you can add those two together. That gets you J1496. All right, looking at 25, uh, we got Kamini here is constructing the kite shown below. Says we got two perpendicular supports. Um, we have a length of 40, and another one has a length of 28. So the ends of the supports are combined or connected, excuse me, with the string. Uh, layer of paper is going to cover the interior, looking for the closest area of the kite. Okay, so we're trying to find the area of this kite. There is not a formula that we're going to use for this in terms of finding area of a kite. We need to think, though, of can we split this into smaller shapes? And the answer to that is yes. We can actually look at this as two separate triangles. We consider this to split into a triangle on the left and then a second triangle on the right. They're going to be the exact same triangle, but we can look at it as two different triangles. Well, since we know that our entire length here is 40, we have a base for this. Uh, thinking through the formula for area of a triangle, it is one half times base times height. And again, we know our base is going to be 40. We know the height for this because the whole kite was 28 wide. So if this is half of that, that's going to make that 14. So now we've got one half our base of 40 times our height of 14. And you can multiply that through. That makes 280 for the area of one kite. Well, we have two kites. So you'll do 280 times 2. And that's going to get you an answer choice of C, 560. All right, looking at the next question here. Uh, it says two sides of a triangle are equal. So two sides equal. It says the third side is going to be three longer than either of the other sides. We've got a perimeter that is 93. We want the longest side. So again, there's no triangle given. I'm going to draw one out. 
So we're gonna triangle here. And this is kind of like the one we did in the PowerPoint. So we need to think about how can we use variables to label these sides. So two sides are equal, and the third side is three longer than those. Well, I don't know the original two sides. I'm going to call them X, and since they're equal, they're both going to be just X. Well, the third side is three longer. So that's three more. It's plus three. So I'll call this X plus three. And then we're told we have the perimeter. So we know that the perimeter is adding all of your sides together. So now I need to make an equation adding all these together. So we're going to add up x plus x. Let's just write it out. We'll do x plus x plus x plus 3. And again, that's going to equal this perimeter of 93. So we start to combine our like terms. So I've got 1, 2, 3 x's and a plus 3. And again, that equals the 93. Start to solve your equation. You're going to minus 3 to both sides. 90 minus 3, or 93 minus 3 makes 90. You would divide both sides by 3. 90 divided by 3 makes 30. Now, be careful on this question. We set up an equation. We did some math. 30 is our answer for x. 30 is an answer choice. And so many times on this question, I see students pick b. Um, and they missed the question. We've done the hard part. Question asks for the longest side, and we found that x is 30. So that, if we go back and plug that in, that makes these two sides 30. And for x plus 3, that makes that side 33, which makes our actual answer choice D. Uh, 12 here, we got a right triangle, and it's asking for the area. We mentioned that earlier. Area is 1 half base times height. And where students go wrong on this is they're not sure which of these numbers are the base and the height. Base is always going to be the bottom, so that's 16. Height is always going to be vertical, that's 12. In this scenario, 20 is the hypotenuse, that's not used to find area. So you'd have 1 half times 16 times 12, and that's going to make an answer choice of G96. All right, 25 says Matt purchased 60 feet of fence. He used the entire roll of fence to make a rectangular dog pen, and we know the pen is 12 wide. It's the length. So again, this tells us about this dog pen. We know that, again, it's um, rectangular. We know this is 12, and we know we got 60 total feet of fence. Doesn't specify area or volume. And a lot of times students will mess up They'll do 60 divided by 12 and get 5, which is A, which is wrong. That would represent area. Keep in mind, fence goes around something. If you're going around a shape, that's perimeter. So that means our perimeter is 60. So we're going to approach this um, kind of like we did the first problem with the parallelogram. If the right side here is 12, that makes this side 12 as well. So if we know our whole perimeter was 60, and we've already used 12 twice. That leaves us with 36. We need to divide that evenly. That leaves us with 18 for these other two sides. So that means our length then would be B18. All right, 26 said the area of a rectangle is 300 square meters, and the length is three times the width. How wide is the rectangle? All right, so we'll draw a rectangle. Uh, we know that area is length times width, and right now we know the area is 300. So, kind of like when we did the PowerPoint, it says the length is three times the width. I don't know what the width is, I'll label that W, but if the length is three times that, that is 3W. So when I start to make my equation here, erase this and move over. So 300 is going to equal 3w times w. All right, well, 3w times w makes 3w squared. And we can start to simplify this equation. So first, you'd want to divide by 3. 300 divided by 3 makes 100. 
And then you would square root to eliminate the square. So the square root of 100 makes W equal to 10. We were asked about width, so the answer to that is going to be F10. Had they asked about length, that would have been 3 times W, 3 times 2 would have made 30. So watch out for those kind of questions. All right, uh, 24 here. It says to the nearest foot, the height of a rectangular prism with the length of 15, width of a third, volume of 100 would be what? So a little bit different type of question here. Um, we're asked to find the height of this prism knowing the length, the width, and the volume. Well, volume for anything rectangular is length times width times height. So we'll just plug in our values. So the volume is 100. The length is 15. The width is 1 and 1 third. And we are looking for height. So that's going to stay H here. So you want to go ahead and start to simplify this. If you do 15 times 1 and 1 third, that makes 20. So now we've got 100 equals 20 times the height. You would divide by 20 on both sides. 100 divided by 20 makes 5. 5 equals H. That gives you F. Uh, if you wanted to, you could have also plugged in your answer choices for H. And if we plug in and do 15 times 1 and a third times 5, that gives you 100. That gives you your height. You could have done that. 43, we got a circle with the circumference of 2 pi square to 2. And it asks you to find the area of the circle. So we, to find area of a circle, that is equal to pi r squared. So we need a radius. Well, they gave us circumference. So you need to think about how do you find circumference of a circle. And there's two formulas. Uh, there's pi d, and then you can use 2 pi r because 2 radii equal 1 diameter. So if circumference equals 2 pi r, and the actual circumference was 2 pi square root of 2, and that equals to 2 pi r, I can use this. This is just an equation, and I can solve for r. If we would divide this here by 2 pi, that cancels that. Divide this by 2 pi, that cancels that. So we're left with the square root of 2 equals r. That's our radius. Well, now we plug that in over here in this area formula. So area is going to equal pi, and then you would have the square root of 2 squared. Well, hopefully you guys remember um, square and square root are inverse operations. They're actually going to cancel one another out, and you'd be left with pi times 2, which makes c, 2 pi. All right, 23 says each side of a square has a length of 50. A rectangle whose area is equal to this square has a width of 10. And we want the length of the rectangle. So a lot to take away here. We got a square with a length of 50. All right, let me go ahead and just draw that. So square looks a little more rectangular, but it's a square. Length of 50. And it says we have a rectangle whose area is equal to the square, and that rectangle has a width of 10. We're looking for the length of the rectangle, all right? Well, knowing then their areas are equal, I need to find the area of the square first. Well, again, we know area of the square is equal to S squared. So our area is equal to 50 squared, and... 50 squared makes this an area of 2,500. So that's the square, which we're told is equal to the area of the rectangle. And we know that its area is equal to its length times width. So if the area is 2,500, and if that equals the length times 10, we can now go through and solve. Cancel multiplying by 10. You would divide by 10. 2,500 divided by 10 is going to give us 250 for our length, and that makes E. 
All right, last question here. This is number 57, so it should be challenging. It should require you to think a little bit. Uh, it says consider all of the rectangles such that the rectangle's length is greater than the width. So what's tricky on this is they're not going to be the same amount. That's going to be the key to here. And it says the length and width are whole numbers of inches. It says which of the following perimeters is not possible for a rectangle with an area of 144. All right, so we got to think about rectangle. Again, area is length times width. So the area is 144. And it says the length is greater than the width. So you're multiplying two numbers, and one is greater than the other. That's how you would get the area of 144. We're looking for the perimeter that's not possible. So if you just think about different options to multiply and get 144. So essentially, this is an algebra skill on a geometry question. So the algebra skill or really middle school math is knowing your factor pairs that will multiply to 144. So like 1 and 144, 2 and 72, 3 and 48, 4 and 36. 5 does not go into 144. You would have 6 and 24. You would have 7 does not go into 144. You'd have 8 and 18. And the only other factor pair is 12 by 12. Well, what happens on all of these pairs is you can have a length greater than a width on all of those factor pairs except for 12 times 12. Those are equal. So we're trying to find the one that's not possible. Well, it says the following perimeter. It's not possible. So we need to find the perimeter if we had a rectangle, which would technically be a square, where you had 12 on all sides. Well, if you had 12 on all sides, 12 four times would give you a perimeter of 48. So that's the one that's not possible. And again, it's because of the condition that the length is greater than the width. So there are your solutions. Uh, if you guys have any questions, um, leave a comment, send me an email. I'll be glad to answer those and get back to you. And we'll go from there.